looking for some methods to tune your calcium reactor and you found nothing but confusing and conflicting theories and methods if that's you stay tuned As some of you might know, I've embarked on the calcium reactor journey for quite a few months now. And coming from a total beginner, there's nothing but confusing and conflicting theories and concepts that's all over the internet. In this video, I'm going to share with everyone what are the common theories and concepts that I came across and how I feel some of them might not be applicable or even be detrimental to my setup and hopefully you can get some insights into how you can tune your calcium reactor for your needs in terms of dialing in the calcium reactor let's get through some of the concept basically i found that there's only two methods in tuning your calcium reactor firstly will be tuning your ph of your calcium reactor and that is accomplishing by adjusting your CO2 regulators bubble per minute rate and the second method will be to adjust your effluent rate and by effluent I mean the output of calcium reactor to provide the alkalinity calcium and some trace elements into our aquarium when it comes down to the tuning of our calcium reactor in terms of hardware i would like to classify it into three budget categories firstly the affordable option where you can just make use of a ph meter to measure the ph of your output of your calcium reactor known as the effluent and adjust your carbon dioxide output on your co2 regulator based on the ph that you would like to achieve on your calcium reactor in terms of effluent output you basically control the flow by using a affordable control valve the second option will be to use an additional equipment which adds on to the cost the additional equipment is your ph controller what it does is basically it cuts off the co2 emission or injection when the ph reaches too low basically it is a countermeasure for your ph in the event that you over inject the co2 and the ph might eventually crash your tank of course being an additional equipment we will have to have additional maintenance and cost added to it the third option is the easiest according to many calcium reactor users out there and that is to use an another equipment which is known as a continuous dosing pump like the Kamoa X1 Pro T2 that I covered recently or even the Ecotech Versa what it does is it continuously push or pull effluent to ensure that the effluent dosing rate or drip rate is as accurate as possible without us having to fiddle around with the control valve if you're a gadget geek like me i would invest in a kh testing equipment such as the kh keeper that i'm using or even the alkatronic to make sure it compensate any dosing if the kh were to decline or just to monitor the kh trend over the day so we can make our adjustment as we go next let's go through some of the common methods and ideas that i've come across that i don't really want to follow because i'm taking a conservative approach coming from dosing switching over to a calcium reactor firstly the common advice will be to cut off all dosing for 24 hours and measure before and after to know your consumption as a calcium reactor user that comes from dosing to me i know my tank actually consume quite a lot of kh per day dosing close to 170 to 180 ml a day and if i were to cut off dosing over 24 hours it will cause a decline of at least 1 dkh and if i'm maintaining my tank's alkalinity at 7 it will essentially bring the total dkh of my aquarium to 6 or even below 6 depending on the consumption for the day secondly 
the common advice that I come across is to pack the pH at 6.4 to 6.8. By just pegging your pH to 6.4 or 6.8, we might eventually cause a alkalinity spike which is uncalled for if we started at a higher pH range. For my case, my understanding is that the calcium reactor media will actually start dissolving at a pH of 7.7. .7. Hence, I actually started with about 10 bubbles per minute with 29 ml per minute of effluent output and that actually arrived at a pH of 7.4 and from there I made my necessary adjustments. Lastly, it's all about the flow rate, the output of your calcium reactor known as the effluent. There's actually two main stream of thoughts. One will be a constant flow rate. To me, it baffles me in terms of what is a constant flow rate. As you can see, a constant flow rate actually means differently and hence it's not really a good guide even though it aids in the prevention of clogging but at least it will be preferable if someone could tell us how many ml exactly in terms of dosing or effluent flow when you're referring it as a constant stream of dosing. The second school of thought will be to count the drips by minute. To me, a uh, different calcium reactor, if you're using a control valve, the output might be different. So one drop might be larger compared to another control valve. It might result differently in terms of total volume when you come across different user. For example, the common translation of 1 ml is about 20 drops, but I'm getting 22 drops or 23 drops just to achieve 1 ml out of my control valve. So this is something for you to take note. Do share your thoughts and methods that you use when you're switching from dosing to a calcium reactor in the description below. Because I'm sure by sharing, beginners such as myself will be able to benefit from your theory and methods to move on to a calcium reactor with ease. When I was switching from the dosing to the calcium reactor, firstly, I did not do a full cut off from my dosing. In fact, both of them were running concurrently. So in terms of the effluent rate, I actually adopted a methodological method. I actually measured how much output every 20 seconds that I got and multiplied by three. To me, that is a sure way that I've known to be able to replicate it whenever I do another dial in of my calcium reactor after my maintenance. The second one will be my pH controller. Since I already got it, I actually set it to 6.8 on the lower spectrum so it will do a cut off at 6.8 and above that 7.2 the injection will start when the regulator gets switched on and since the calcium reactor media start dissolving at 7.7 .7, I believe this is a safe range. To prevent any huge fluctuation of my DKH or alkalinity in my tank, I actually perform two tests a day whereby I will test the DKH of the output of my calcium reactor which is also known as the effluent and also the DKH level of my display tank. In the morning after my test, I will actually adjust the dosing pumps output for the day whereby I will either compensate in terms of DKH dosing or reduce if the effluent actually increases in terms of concentration of alkalinity. In the evening, I will either adjust my bubble count rate in terms of CO2 injection or I will adjust the effluent flow rate to achieve the right DKH that I would want to achieve. Hence, that's the reason of the two tests a day one is to adjust the dosing pump in the morning and one is to adjust my calcium reactor at night. 
based on that I actually did a tracking file if you're interested I'm gonna leave the tracking file as you can see in the description below so feel free to download it if you think if it's of any value to you in your calcium reactors journey all that said in the next video I'll be sharing some of the frustrations I get when it comes to dosing trace elements and some great products from a company that I've been talking to for the past few months so if you haven't feel free to subscribe and stay tuned for the next video